watershed management we need to know through various angles as you saw in the previous slide that it has certain set of objectives and also certain set of principles so following this let us now look at the different approaches that we follow in watershed management appropriate you know different resource problems for planning and implementation and management this is one way watershed management which can help any administrator or any community to solve these problems in an appropriate manner watershed approach also assist or facilitate appropriate land and water management at the watershed scale environmentally financially and socially if you may recall that at the very beginning of this course we discussed about five capitals human capital social capital natural capital so now if you if you look at the watershed approach it basically actually again link to those capitals that we talk about it look at natural capital it look at social capital human capital means the human resources the skill labor and the community so all these basic concepts you will find that watershed approach is one way that it applies those thing for better natural resource management it also assist in understanding the environmental factor that contributes to a problem nowadays watershed approach also facilitate different kind of modeling crop modeling water modeling erosion modeling land use based modeling it also helps in monitoring and reporting under the watershed framework that we discussed couple of slides back then comes uh, people's participation which actually you know watershed also allows for people participation in a very significant manner it plays a key role in this watershed management approach it includes people participation sense of ownership and also ensures the sustainability of any intervention that is being planned so next comes the role of various stakeholders in watershed management you know that in any administrative unit like say the case of watershed you will find there are various stakeholders various actors who actually play important and critical role for watershed management so stakeholder participation in watershed management is very very important we for successful watershed management need to keep these all stakeholder engaged for a better or sustainable management of resources now stakeholder participation can take place in in various manner it can be you know dialogue discussions working in the field together outreach so various way but what is important is that several you know coordinated awareness programs can also be run through watershed management system this approach allows also participation of of political non political government non government religious non religious organization ngo schools everyone who ever has a role to play in in a watershed or any administrative unit they can play their role for the betterment of the community or betterment of the watershed towards natural resource management watershed approach also you know allows reforestation in a very huge way it helps in increasing organic farming also in the watershed area it gives enough opportunity scopes to actually pursue organic farming job opportunity creation in watershed management is another aspect when you go for various kind of intervention in an watershed those will generate lot of income i will discuss about those kind of you know technical and non technical intervention at the watershed scale in later slides or maybe in the next lecture in case of watershed management as i said that stakeholder play a very important role now identification of stakeholder is an important task there will be many stakeholder as i said but for a successful watershed management and natural resource management you need to identify the appropriate stakeholder or at least few of them who will actually take the key role in the watershed management and this can include international agencies 
foreign government for climate change, biodiversity, conservation, transboundary, water related issues, agriculture, universities, department, state government, regional agencies for various resource management, local community, farmers. So, this identification of group or individual stakeholder is critical to the success of watershed management. Now, the characterizations of issues and problem formulation in a watershed is also important. So, there would be when you enter in any watershed area, you will encounter with many issues, many problems. Now, it is important for us to focus on the most important one first. Now, this most important one, how you will arrive that we have discussed earlier in ranking process, pairwise ranking, ranking process you can actually identify one or set of few problems which you need to you know address at the beginning. Now, next is discussion with uh, local people and that process will automatically takes place when you go for participatory rural appraisal which uh, again we discussed earlier. So, participatory rural appraiser or rapid rural appraiser these gives you enough opportunity to interact with local people and also with various stakeholders. So, these are the aspects uh, we already discussed under PRA that what actually we do during interaction with people. So, I will just uh, skip this part. Then next comes to understand the influence of stakeholder. Again a very critical point. Suppose there is one state department say water resource department in one particular watershed is very active in comparison to the other department say PHED, public health or maybe agriculture, probably that department, water department are, are very aggressive, very active in that particular area for whatsoever reason. Now, naturally the influence of that water uh, resources department on the local community and their interactions, their relation with local community will be much stronger than the other. So, when you go to plan for the management of water set of that area. So, you must include water resource department there. That does not mean that you will not include other, but you must not miss that department. So, because you need to understand that which you know stakeholder has you know quite a good of amount of influence on the local community in that particular area, because that helps you to carry out the different processes and systems within the watershed management approach. Now, policies, policies we have many policies already in the existing system. Watershed management also allow or give enough scope to link various policies and various you know schemes through this watershed management approach. Say for water policy, now water policy it actually takes care of various kind of you know legislations, rules, laws that affect the collection, the preparation, use, disposal and protection of water resources. So, we need to know about the power and the strength of these policies and then suitably you know you could actually bring in in the watershed management because watershed management approach provides you that scope as well. Set of guidelines and directives will be available within you know water policies which are which are already existing in our system for utilizing various you know water resources at different sectors in a equitable manner. Again this word equitable is very important which leads to the sustainable development all right. Then comes that uh, policies again can talk about various sector and sector wise water allocation, sector wise water utilization is also very very different. The amount of water used for agriculture and the amount of water used for industry could be very different. So, the different uh, allocation priorities then accordingly different water conservation measures institutional structure for water resource planning and management and ownership related rights with regard to the use of water resources and if found defaulter then what kind of penalty you can put or not and again incentives or awards for taking care of water resources and rejuvenating it. So, these are certain you know aspects within the water policy 
which can basically allow your watershed management to function in a better manner. Let us look at uh, uh, this figure which simplify the thing that I have been uh, discussing in the last couple of minutes. So, this is your water policy framework which in one hand look at the institutional aspects, on the other hand it looks as the legislative aspects. In case of institutional aspects, it talks about various you know uh, water resource planning management by different institutions starting from the village development council VDCs at the ground level and it could go up to even central government level. So, legislative rights we are just discuss about rights to water uh, use and if you are misusing then what kind of penalty also will be there. If you are managing water resources in a very appropriate manner what kind of incentives or awards can be given there. These are the things which uh, can come in the legislative matter. Then comes uh, in continuation of water policy. Policy, if you see that policy formulation for any sector, it should be done by considering you know the larger interest of the community and perhaps the whole country. Because suppose we were doing a kind of a watershed management practice for suppose in a district in Uttar Pradesh or in a district in West Bengal or somewhere. Now, if you think only for that particular area, of course that area development will be faster. But the global impact of your any intervention at the local level need to be also thought because the water, air, these things does not go by you know territorial boundary. So, any kind of initiatives or action that you will be taking or implementing in any watershed in any part of the country, we must keep in, in mind that the impact of that might go into other parts of the country and thus to another country. So, there are various you know aspect of that the interrelationships between various river ecosystem is one that I can cite in this aspect that where our or any other country's actions or planning can actually impact the other country. So, this, this is the point where actually we need to uh, think globally even if we take the action locally. Now, policy formulation also should be consistent with country, state and uh, local administration. There should not be any contradiction between policy generated for one aspect with the other one. Watershed development also you know it takes a huge amount of you know care for land, water resources, agriculture, livestock. So, this entire picture need to be seen in a very integrated manner. Implementation can be done by, by the development of different national level watershed program at the district level, state level, foreign community collaboration can also take place. These days various you know international agencies also take lot of interest in watershed development program. So, this kind of you know integration can take place for bigger goal uh, not only for the particular area that uh, you are working, but it can spread across the country and beyond. So, there are of course, uh, when we talk about uh, you know policies related to any sectors, there are certain policy issues actually which are involved with like poor people requirement and influences we need to be considered and then appropriate and proper connection required between social and technological and political uh, systems. We must prioritize to give water resource development in case of watershed management. Agroecological approach need to be emphasized in the watershed development program. So, policy issues is uh, very important to know for us for watershed management. What are the policy issues that we must consider? See, when we work for a watershed development, certainly the majority of the population will be relatively poorer, poorer than you know any other place that you can think of. So, we need to first understand the requirements of the poor people and then we also need to consider the appropriate and proper connection required between the social, the technological and the political system. So, you know these uh, three component basically are very important that they work in tandem. So, if these three work in a proper manner then you will see that your watershed management 
will work the way actually you want it to work. So the interaction and coordination between the social, technological and political aspect into watershed management need to be taken care of. Priority uh, need to be given for water resources development in watershed, there is no doubt. Agroecological approach need to be emphasized in the watershed development program because as you know that especially in our country, we have very diversified agroecological system. So the watershed management approach or system or different intervention also need to be thought on the basis of the agroecology where you are working. So the, the way that you will be managing watershed in Rajasthan, it will be totally different in Assam, all right? Because we know that uh, Rajasthan is uh, dry and is uh, mostly you know, affected by droughts, whereas in Assam is fully wet and often affected by flood. So two different completely ecosystem. Uh, so the approaches in watershed development need to be uh, different consideration of biomass conservation in the watershed is another critical parameter. We uh, need to properly you know, validate different kind of modeling or simulation program with field data. For even climate change impact assessment at the watershed scale, we can always do. We can use GIS multiple criteria decision analysis can also be applied which we, we discussed. Uh, uh, during you know prioritization process, it helps in prioritize your alternatives. Collaboration with uh, various you know government, non-government, international bodies are critical for the success of watershed management. Finally, you need to monitor the systems in a regular manner. Monitoring is key for the success of watershed management. Mm -hmm.